Welcome back to Faction Entertainment. Today, I will show you a science fiction movie from 2012 titled Prometheus. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy on prehistoric Earth as a huge alien UFO departs from the planet. A humanoid alien stands beside the waterfall and drinks the dark liquid, causing his body to disintegrate as its remains cascade into the waterfall. The alien's DNA triggers a biogenetic reaction. Later in 2089, two archaeologists, Elizabeth Shaw and Charlie Holloway, are doing an observation in a cave when they discover an ancient star map and consider it as an invitation from humanity creators, or they call it as engineers. In a large spaceship, the ship's crew makes the long journey sleeping in status, while an android robot named David monitors their voyage. After two years, the ship suddenly stops and says that they have already reached the destination threshold, meaning that they have arrived at their destination. The first crew, or known as mission director, Meredith Vickers, has awakened and is approached by David, commanding him to wake up the entire crew. The crew then is presented a visual recording showing Sir Peter Wayland, the CEO of Wayland Corporation, the man who gathered the funding to construct the advanced research vessel named Prometheus to find the engineers. The boss then introduces the archaeologist, who explains that archaeological digs from all around the world indicate the same pictogram showing, then worshipping giant creatures pointing into a star. From that, they then found a planet that is capable of sustaining life named LV-223, the planet that they just arrived at. The Prometheus lands near a large artificial structure in a valley with six hours left of daylight. The survey team starts to suit up and heads inside to explore. Using Mr. Five Field's advanced detector drones, they are able to picture the whole grid of the structure. They continue their expedition deeper and then discover a room with a hole inside it where the air is breathable as something is generating an atmosphere. David, on the other side, discovers green slime, which contains many particles and makes some electric sound. He also presses a sequence of buttons to the wall, activating a recorded hologram that shows several engineers in spacesuits running from something. The survey team then chases the hologram and finds one of the engineers falls down in front of a door whose body is still there. The carbon reader indicates that the body has been lying there for more than 2,000 years. David attempts to open the door and they discover a room full of well-arranged cylindrical vases containing black liquid and paintings all over the wall. Suddenly, the control unit detects incoming silica storms, and the survey team immediately starts to fall back. They also bring the dead engineer's head, and David packs one of the vases. The team removes the helmet from the deceased engineer's head and manages to shock the head back to life momentarily before it explodes into pieces. Shaw then takes a DNA sample and analyzes it, discovering that the engineer has the same DNA as humans with a perfect match. David investigates the stolen cylinder and discovers the black liquid within. He secretly takes a drop of the liquid and intentionally infects Holloway with a substance by giving him a glass of champagne. Unaware of what is within his body, he engages in sexual intercourse with Shaw. On the other side, Fifield and Milburn, who were left behind, continue their exploration in the cave. They come across a pile of engineer bodies while they are suddenly told by the control unit that a detector drone reading a life form from the west but it suddenly disappears, claiming that it's just a glitch. Having known that, they decided to walk towards the east and arrive at the previously visited room. They spot something slithering in the river of black liquid and suddenly a snake-like creature pops out. The aggressive creature then attacks Milburn. Fifield tries his best to help his mate, but it ends up breaking his arms and killing Milburn. It also sprays corrosive fluid towards Melbourne's helmet, destroying it and burning his face. The next day, the crew returns to the structures, while David suddenly stops and turns in another direction. He then discovers a room containing a surviving engineer kept in a status. He attempts to press the buttons, causing a chair to swivel out and commencing the engineer's hologram. An engineer is spotted playing the flute and suddenly a huge space map appears, highlighting Earth as its next destination. On the other side, the crew finally finds Milburn's corpse, but Holloway's condition is getting worse as the side effect of consuming the black liquid. They then rush back to Prometheus. Vickers is already waiting for them, preventing Holloway from getting into the ship. Equipped with flamethrowers, she finally burns him to death. On the ship, Shaw is being examined by David, who reveals she is three months pregnant. That's quite odd, as they only have intercourse ten hours ago feeling something is wrong with it. She insists to get it out immediately but David suggests putting her into a cry of stasis until they reach Earth. 
while she is going to be taken, she'll fight back, manages to run away, and performs a self-surgery with a med pod. Surprisingly, an octopus-like alien is extracted from her belly. Shaw manages to escape from the pod and traps the weird creature there. The control unit detects that Phil Field's monitor just popped up and finds that he is actually standing outside the ship. With that monster face, he becomes much stronger and attacks the ship crew. They finally manage to take him out by burning him with the flamethrowers. On the run, Shell finds out that Whaling is still alive and was on the ship all the time. He explains that meeting the makers or the engineers could help him to cheat death in some way, but Shaw urges that they must leave because the engineers are not what they are thinking. They kill people. He refuses as they have been so close to meet them, and this will be their only chance. While dressing up, Shaw meets the Prometheus captain, Janik, who speculates that this planet is not their home and the structure was part of an engineered military base that lost control of its biological weapon the mutagenic black liquid. Vickers warns the CEO that he will die if he goes to the structure. There it also reveals that the old man is actually her father. They then return to the part of the structure David had visited before, coming across thousands of cylindrical vases. Given the live stream from Shaw's camera, the control room discovers that the room is actually a spaceship. David reveals that the engineers were heading to the Earth to destroy humanity because, sometimes to create, one must first destroy. They attempt to awaken the surviving engineer. As he wakes up, David speaks to him to explain what Waylon wants. Unfortunately, the engineer responds by decapitating David. Killing Wayland in a team, Shaw manages to escape, but the engineer touches a ball of green energy, activating the spaceship and bringing out a weapon-like chair. He sets the course back to Earth to continue his mission to destroy humanity, and the ship starts taking off. On the other side, Shaw urges Janik to prevent the alien spaceship from flying even further. Convinced by Shaw, the captain manages to stop the ship by crashing it with the Prometheus, killing himself and his remaining crew. Only Vickers, who manages to escape from the ship, ejecting in an escape pod as the ship collides. It starts rolling in a perfectly straight line, killing Vickers as she fails to outrun it. It's quite funny to see Vickers' inability to run in a different direction. Barely surviving, Shaw makes a direct Prometheus and finds the alien offspring she had removed previously now has grown to enormous size. Luckily, it is still trapped in the medical bay. Surprisingly, David is still alive and reveals to her that the engineer has survived the crash and is coming for her. Moments later, the engineer forces open the ship's airlock and attacks Shaw but she manages to open the medical bay's door and unleashes the alien offspring. After a struggle, the engineer is subdued by the gigantic creature, which thrusts an overpass later down the engineer's throat, killing him. David begs for Shaw's help and claims that there is still another ship, and he could fly the ship without an option and desperate for an answer. Shaw then recovers David's head and body from the wrecked engineer ship. With his help instead of flying back to Earth, they are heading for the engineer's homeworld hoping to find why they created humanity, but only to attempt to destroy it later. The black liquid was originally created by the engineers as a biological weapon, with the purpose to wipe out the entire planet, especially Earth. It's actually a lethal, mutagenic pathogen composed of billions of small microorganisms. They were kept in the cylindrical vase due to its unstable nature at ambient temperature, as we saw in the previous scene where the crew was forced into the room and disrupt the atmosphere, the black liquid begins to react. We also have seen throughout the movie that the creatures infect the hosts, causing them to mutate, turning them later into more aggressive and stronger creatures. That is all for this video. Make sure to subscribe to Faction Entertainment and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.